friends, I'm Jess, welcome to the Hex Library, where today we'll be talking about my wrap up for the month of April. In the month of April I read seven books, I wish I could tell you how many pages it was, but my note says 1157 and no part of that sounds correct. It also says I only read three books and I can obviously look at this and go that's more than three. Uh, so as always we'll start with my lowest rated books and work my way up to the highest rated. We'll start with our DNFs then go to rereads and then on through. So DNFs for the month. I DNFed A Cosmic Kind of Love by Samantha Young at 17%. That book is about a wedding planner who one of her clients accidentally sends her this video diary from her ex-boyfriend who was an astronaut and so the wedding planner lady is like watching these videos which is a whole other thing um, watching these videos and then replying back to them via an email and it the emails are sending back getting sent back to her as if they've bounced but actually he's getting the emails he's just making it look like they're being bounced and there's so much creep going on in this that I'm not okay with that. I, like I said, DNF'd at 17%. It was not, it was too creepy. Like it was too, too skeezy for me. As for books from my shelves, I DNF'd Ruined at about, oh, 2%. This actually might be the one that I only read the first chapter of. Or was that ruined i read the first chapter of and just didn't like it wasn't interested in the world not what i'm looking for currently so i dnf this i also dnf ash princess at chapter two mostly because reading the first chapter felt like rereading red queen which i did love but i didn't want to read it again so read some reviews read some similarities between the two and was like you know if I want to read Red Queen again, I'll just read Red Queen again. So DNF to this. I also DNF to The Writing Retreat by Julia Bartz. I read the first chapter of this and was just completely put off by the main character and her weird obsession with her ex-best friend that there is some weird story going on in the background there. And then I read a couple of reviews and was terrified by the reviews that I read of the content warnings of what happens in this book. Um, I thought this was just like a um, group of people who get thrown into a secluded setting where they fight for this prize amount to have their book published and like people start dying kind of like a and then there were none kind of deal but it gets way weirder than that. All of these books I'll have uh, my reviews linked for on Goodreads and in my review for this book I link the review that made me go mm, no. So if you want to know what the mm, no was all about you can find that there. I also unhauled many books and those will be in my TBR takedown which will be coming up later in the month. So you can see those there. Rereads. I reread Witchlings by Clarabel A. Ortega because because the second book came out the first week of May. So I read Witchlings very at the end of the month. Uh, Witchlings is the only book that I gave a full 5.25 out of 5 stars to last year. It is about these three witches who live in the society where on a witch's I think 12th or 13th birthday they get sorted into these covens and any witches that are left over are considered spares and spares are considered like the lower class of society. Um, they aren't allowed to learn the same magics as other people. They are kind of relegated to like the jobs in society that no one really wants um, and they're just not seen as that great. And when a coven is formed, they have like this small amount of time where they really have to like just be okay with the coven they were sorted into. And these three witches are not okay with being sorted into a coven of spares. And so their coven starts to break. And if your coven breaks, you lose your magic forever. And so they take on what is called the impossible task, which is essentially an impossible task, um, where they have to f defeat the night beast. And if they don't defeat the night beast, they will be turned into frogs forever. And so the story follows them trying to f defeat the night beast and meeting people in their world and learning more about the covens. Um, there's a sorting quiz. You can take the sorting quiz and find out what coven you're in. I am in Moth House which when you read what Moth House is about, 
you will agree that it is absolutely correct. They also updated the test this year so that you can also be sorted as a spare, which was not an option previously. And I retook the test and I am still part of Moth House. So if that tells you anything. At three out of five stars, I have the Ballad of Mulan, which essentially is just um, the Ballad of Mulan. Uh, if you were around uh, in AuthorTube chat, we did Mulan as our book club pick this month and our watch. Um, the ballad is very short. Um, there are, I read I think four different versions. They're just, they're just a couple of pages. It's the original tale of where Disney got their story of Milan from and it's just like an old Chinese folklore tale uh, that was very interesting and it's interesting to see like the different versions of how it's translated into like different stories. They all have like the same kind of heart but there are parts that are different and it was interesting. Each with 3.25 stars I have the Two Towers and The Return of the King by J.R.R. Tolkien. I think I liked Return of the King better than The Two Towers as a book form, but they just ended up in the same rating. I don't know what the answer is to that, how or why, but that's just how the cookie crumbles sometimes. I still have definite problems with this series as far as its wordiness and the way it treats its female characters and those things and I do so prefer the movies to the books just because I think the movies do a better job of in my brain putting the action onto the screen. I also think that the Battle of Helm's Deep um, in The Two Towers is so much better done. It has so much more heart and feel to it in the movie versus the book. The book is very um, the men go and they fight and the women are somewhere else whereas in the movie it is the women and the children are the ones who are fighting because the men are all gone. And it is just this impeccable story where it just like pulls on your heartstrings and makes you feel all the feels and shows that, you know, men aren't the only ones who can fight. So I, I, I really appreciate what Peter Jackson did with that. Return of the King, I do like, I think the reason why P Return of the King got kind of a lower rating is because much like the movie, um, there's like an ending and then another 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 ending. It keeps going on and on and on. It's like, when is the ending actually going to happen? When am I going to get there? I don't know. Uh, and this one has even more of those. I knew that the ending was different. I knew that there was um, a part where like, you know, they get back to the Shire and things are not what they were before, um, before we get to Frodo rolling off into the Undying Lands. It just, it felt like it took forever. And I understand the point and I understand why, but it really drug on at the end. And I think that's probably the only reason why Return of the King got the same rating as The Two Towers, because I did enjoy the story in Return of the King more than The Two Towers in book form. Okay. We then have The Soulmate by Sally Hepworth. I gave this a 3.5 out of 5 stars. This book was interesting as far as like the plot. So this follows a couple who live on a cliffside where people are known to go and to jump to their deaths. Uh, and the beginning of the story is them talking about how the husband has kind of, since they moved in, watches the cliffs and has been known to, um, when he sees someone who's maybe standing there for too long, he'll go out and kind of talk to them and talks them off at the edge. And the book starts out with someone not being talked off the edge. Someone jumps. But did she really jump? And that's kind of the story that we're learning. Like, did she actually jump? Is that what happened? Um, there are two point of views in this, and the one point of view is a very strange point of view to get. But we also get present day and the past and the future, which is technically the present day, but it's the present day as the story progresses. So it's kind of the future. It's very hard to understand. I'm probably gonna have to stop filming because my nephew is now mowing the backyard. So I guess we'll come back to this later. Okay, I think he's done now. We can go back to this beauty. This book follows the wife and the husband and like trying to figure out, did the person jump? Were they pushed? If they were pushed, why did they get pushed? If they jumped, why did they jump? That kind of thing. I've read it two of Hepworth's novels so far. I, um, the other I read was The Good Sister, which I definitely preferred over this one. But they're very like family drama-esque with some mystery elements to them. And while I liked this, I didn't necessarily love it. It didn't have any like big twists or turns. There was like one twist towards the end, but it really wasn't impactful in my opinion. It just kind of was there. Um, so I didn't necessarily 
love it as much as I could have. It does deal a lot with um, suicidal ideation, suicide in general, um, a lot of that. So if that's an issue for you, I highly recommend skipping this one. Otherwise, it's okay. Next at four stars, we have The Wall by Marlon Haushofer. This is a translated fiction. It is part of the Wheatberry Books book club which is my local bookstore we're reading a translated book every month this was April's book I gave it a four stars it follows a girl we never learn her name a woman I should say a woman who's like in her 40s and she is on this vacation with her cousin and her cousin's husband uh, in the mountains in the Alps I think she stays at the house one night they go to town and the next morning she realized they hadn't came back yet and so she kind of starts to go and look for them because it's odd for them to not have come back and when she goes to look for them she bumps into this wall it's invisible it is all-encompassing and it's high she can't go over it she can't go under it she can't go around it and the book follows her like chronicling her life inside this wall and what she learns about herself and the world and it really is about survival it's very mundane there's a lot of like you know this is how I plow the beans this is how I sow potatoes this is how I do this thing this is how I mend my clothing this is how I do this thing there is animal death in this I will tell you the dog does die however it is very early on when we meet the dog we because she's telling the story from the future um, she's writing like chronicling her diaries from the time that she has been there we learn pretty early on after we meet the dog that the dog is no longer there and so we're prepared for it but in case you need to know the dog does die okay the dog is not the only thing that dies it's a hard knock life for this lady who we don't know her name but I think there's like a really weird twist at the end that is like, I don't know how we got here, but here we are. Um, the ending is wild. And we never learn where the wall came from. So if you need to know where the world came from or where the wall came from, you're not gonna learn that. Also, from her side of the wall, she can see some of like the neighboring towns um, and animals and people on the other side of the wall. And they are basically petrified. People are just stopped in whatever motion they were stopped in when the wall went up. And she doesn't know why she's the only one who can move and they can't. It's a whole thing. There's a line in here that I highlighted that really I think encompasses the entirety of the story and that is the only enemy I have ever encountered in my life so far had been man. And so because she's the only person in this ecosystem inside the wall she kind of learns what the world would be like without the influence of man um, this was also written in the 60s, so it's like pre-internet, pre-cell phone, pre-all of that. Um, so it is written in the 60s, and I still think it's a very good book. I think that if you can handle the mundane aspects of it, I think it's very interesting and introspective on society as a whole and our life and how we feel about things, how um, we talk about like human permanence, all of those things. If you like a end of the world kind of novel where you're just like you and a main character and them trying to figure out how to survive in the world that they're in, very good book. With 4.25 we have Well Traveled by Jen DeLuca. This is the fourth book in the, I don't know if the series is called Well Met or what is the series called? I don't know. The first book's Well Met. This is Well Traveled. It's the fourth book. This is one of my favorite dedications it says I dedicate this book to me we did it Jen I love that it's great you did it Jen go you if you have read this series this book follows Lulu who is the cousin of the love interest from book three and Dex from the dueling kilts who is sort of the love interest from book two sort of okay and it's about Lulu needing to get away from her life. If you read book three, you know that Lulu is like an attorney and she's like always like getting passed over for promotion and she like her whole life is her job and she feels like her family is like a very high achieving type of family where they put a lot of pressure on being perfect and being in this job and doing all these perfect things. And 
the beginning of the story Lulu just decides that she's over it and so she quits her job and she's like I don't know what the fuck I'm gonna do now and she ends up going on travel with the dueling kilts um because they know her through her cousin and it's the whole like traveling the renaissance circuit so my biggest issue with book three was that we didn't see a lot of the renaissance fair which is fair because our love interest from the third book she is not very into the fair this book takes place almost entirely at the fair so it was fan fantastic I loved it some people said they didn't really feel like they ha felt the romance between these two characters I disagree I definitely felt the romance also this is not so much a rom-com as it is women's fiction um, with a romance in it it's much more women's fiction where it's Lulu trying to figure out her place in the world what she wants to do for a living all of that versus like being dead set on it being like just a rom-com which well met is definitely a rom-com this is definitely not a rom-com however loved it and the last book that we're going to talk about is spellbound by ft lukens i also gave that a 4.25 out of 5 stars i loved this book it was my second book by ft lukens i did prefer the first book which was um so this is ever after which was fantastic uh but spellbound is more quiet more um i wouldn't don't want to necessarily say in our world but it is more like our world uh, where people have magics and there are mundanes who don't have the magics and our main character is a kid who grew up with a magical grandmother but he isn't seen to have power and so when his grandmother dies he's completely removed from that community that he's grown up in and is basically like you're on your own kid have a good time and he's very intelligent and he decides that he wants to work for one of the uh, most prominent magicians I don't know what they're called I can't remember because my brain is out but like the most prominent of the spellcasters and he manages manages to convince her to give him a job and then he ends up having like a romance with her rival's apprentice so it's the two apprentices are falling in love and then their rival bosses end up getting kidnapped and then they have to save their rival bosses while also figuring out how to deal with a crush also it's gay also um i think the like the world building and like the story of how everything happens is really cute but i did not necessarily love the end i feel like the culmination of like them um rescuing their bosses was just very easy very quick boom it's over maybe that wasn't the highlight of the story but if it's not the highlight of the story why did you put it on the premise on the back of the book okay however I had a fantastic time it was a good read I had fun I just wish the plot had been a little more fleshed out at the end if you know what I mean so these are most of the books and that I read in April if you have any comments questions or concerns about these books you may hit me up in the comments down below also if you've made it this far and you're not feeling chatty you can leave me a crystal ball emoji it's right here in purple um yeah you can leave me a crystal ball emoji to let me know that you made it this far that's all i have for today i post reading writing book and planner related content a couple times a week if you don't want to miss anything i have going on in the future make sure you hit the subscribe button and the notification bell down below and until then i will see you guys next time bye